Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Job 11:13 to 16. If you direct your heart rightly, you will stretch out your hands toward him. If iniquity is in your hand, put it far away and do not let wickedness reside in your tents. Surely then you will lift up your face without blemish. You will be secure and will not fear. You will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. You will forget your misery. You will forget your misery. You will remember it as waters that have passed away. You will remember it as waters that has passed away. Pray after me, my Lord Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Help me. Help me. To forget. To forget. All my miseries. All my miseries. Help me. Help me. to remember to remember your goodness your goodness in my life in my life then psalm chapter 90 verse 15 make us glad make us glad as many days as many days as you have afflicted us as you have afflicted us and as many years and as many years as we have seen evil as we have seen evil now this session is all about inner healing inner healing now the lord is reminding us he will let us to forget all our misery he will also reminding us that he will make us glad as many days as many years we have gone through certain wounds pain rejection sorrow and affliction now we are going to listen that as we are christians as we belong to christ actually our wounds are our strength our wounds are our strength if you are wounded you are blessed repeat after me my jesus my jesus i thank you i thank you for all the wounds for all the wounds i have endured i have endured i know i know you can use these wounds you can use these wounds for my healing for my healing and the healing of many others and the healing of many others through me through me so today we are going to find that your strength are your wounds because you surrender you submit these wounds at the feet of the lord i met this particular girl 19 years and then she came to me with two little girls and she told me father bless my kids then i told her uh i told her about what about the father of these kids then she said these are orphans then i said so what about you these are not your kids she said no these are my adopted kids then i asked her are you married she said no i am not married what do you do she said i have a job i asked her how good is the job she said it's a good job then i told her what about your marriage she said when it is time god will bring me a husband but i asked her but will somebody accept you with two adopted kids are you not taking such a big risk of adopting children when you are so young you are not married you are not settled then she told me father me i am also an orphan god blessed me god helped me through different people and for me it's a joy to look after orphans and these kids they call me mama and i be a mother to them and i thank god then she told me but then i told her but why are you not taking a big risk of putting your life into trouble because can somebody take kids as orphans when you have not settled your life then she told me father you don't understand what an orphan needs because you are not an orphan i understand i know what a child needs 
is a mother and for for these kids i am their mother i am giving them a new identity a new dignity and a new life praise the lord my dear sisters and brothers she is telling me because she suffered she is wounded she was rejected she was an orphan now she is a healing instrument for the orphans she is a healing instrument of god for me she has a title called consoling agent of god we read in isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 book of isaiah prophet isaiah this is chapter 50 verse 4 you can kindly repeat after me this word of god isaiah chapter 50 verse 4 the lord god has given me the lord god has given me the tongue of a teacher the tongue of a teacher that i may know that i may know how to sustain how to sustain the weary with a word the weary with a word morning by morning morning by morning he wakens my ear he wakens my ear to listen to listen as those who are taught as those who are taught listen carefully the lord god has given this young girl who is an orphan the tongue of a teacher that she who is an orphan know how to sustain the orphans with a word morning by morning the lord wakens her ears telling how far how did i showed mercy to you how did i bring you out of this darkness this abandonment and you be a teacher to others praise the lord hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah so today the suffering that you are going through the rejection you are going through the pain that you are suffering once you offer this at the feet of the lord once you join your wounds to the wounds of jesus you will become a powerful instrument that means the wounds that you have you don't want to hide it you don't want to be ashamed of it you have to say thank you to the lord because these wounds make you be identified with your christ Saint Bridget of Sweden made a statement like this in her vision Jesus had more than 5480 wounds and we can read here by his wounds you have been healed if you want to become a healer you have to be first wounded you have to first get healed of the wounds you have gone through so you are power this this orphan girl why she could look after two orphans why she could become a mother to them she was healed of being an orphan so being an orphan in itself is a big huge wound no love of a dad no love of a mom but when christ comes inside that wound you become a powerful instrument even me being a priest i was discouraging her because i never got the wound of being often and the healing of being an often she got it so today in whatever situation you are attending this retreat whatever misery you have maybe poverty being abandonment having no love of a dad having no love of a mom you will be able to once you surrender that wound to jesus you will be able to become a consoling agent of jesus praise the lord hallelujah in any area you are wounded that is the area god is going to use you powerfully i met a refugee from kenya in italy so while talking to this refugee she was working with the border force like the refugees from somalia and so on then this person this lady told me when i was an officer i wanted to prove that we are strong people and we don't just do anything i only permitted people who are refugees from somalia to enter kenya only those who have merit those who have degrees those who are qualified and i blocked everyone else when civil war broke out in somalia they used to cross to kenya 
I was on the border force and I wanted to prove that I am a capable officer. I blocked everyone, even mothers with the children, to enter Kenya saying they are not qualified. I was looking at their merit. Now I am a refugee. Now only I understand the pain of a refugee. If I get one more chance, I will, don't look, I will never look at merit. I will look at mercy of God. Sisters and brothers, certain wounds, certain rejection, certain pain he permits in our life he is to become a consoling agent of God. Everything will pass away. The so-called wound that you have is a wound for healing. Not only yourself, but others. And everything that happens in your life is for the proclamation of gospel. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. Saint Paul tells like this. You can please repeat after me. I want you to know. I want you to know. Beloved. Beloved. That what has happened to me. That what has happened to me. Has actually helped has, has actually, actually helped, helped to spread the gospel. To spread the gospel. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel. So whatever happens in your life today, whatever suffering that happens in your life, ask the Lord, I offer it to you. Use this particular suffering. This particular humiliation for the spread of the gospel. I want to become your consoling agent. I want to become your soldier. It can only happen if you are a wounded, healed person. And this is what he is going to do through inner healing. All the wounds you have suffered, all the pain you have suffered, once you surrender to the Lord, it has a meaning because Jesus suffered. Jesus has gone through all these wounds. Any wound that you have, you receive healing when you find Jesus was wounded the same way you are wounded. There are people who say, they are, Father, I am, I am the most rejected. There are people who say, I am the most rejected. Then I have to say, nobody is rejected like Jesus. Jesus was brought before a crowd of people by Pontius Pilate. The crowd are the people whom Jesus healed, delivered, set them free. The same people whom he gave multiplied bread and gave them to eat and be satisfied. This Pontius Pilate is asking the same, same crowd. Whom do you want me to release? Jesus of Nazareth or Barabbas the criminal. The crowd screamed, free Barabbas, crucify Jesus. My dear sisters and brothers, if you are being standing in the place of Jesus in front of your own family members, relatives, for whom you, you worked day and night, and they are shouting that they wanted you to be crucified, Jesus went through that kind of extreme rejection. But he never rejected anyone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you put yourself into the rejection that Jesus suffered, you find you suffer nothing. Then you will find meaning for your rejection. God is going to make you a powerful instrument. And he wants to let you to come out of human evaluations. Many people have the wounds of what people say. It is called human oppression. If some people say you are not good, you are slow, you are not good looking, you are not hard working. Human opinion will always change. If you are wounded by the comments of people, if you are wounded, if you have stopped singing, because somebody commented, your voice is not good. You are oppressed by human comments. You are wounded. You need to listen to what God says. What is God's command? I want you to read this word of God from, this is Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. This is from verses from 4 and 5. Acts 28, 4 and 5. 
This is about Paul reaching the island of Malta after the shipwreck. Let me read this word of God. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, This man must be a murderer. Though he has escaped from the sea, justice has not, follow, has not allowed him to live. They were expecting him to swell up or drop dead. But after they had waited a long time and saw that nothing unusual had happened to him, they changed their minds and began to say that he was a god. Saint Paul, on his missionary journey to Malta, he involved in a shipwreck and he, he went into Malta. Actually, his journey was to Rome. He reached Malta, the island. The Maltese are not Christians. They are strangers. So Paul reaching this island. So because it was cold, he started to get some warmth through the fire that they were burning. Immediately an ardor, the serpent has, this ardor has uh, made round on his hand. Now what happened? They are making a comment, they are telling, because Paul is a stranger to him. They are saying that he is a murderer. That is why the serpent has rounded his hand and he will die. Because he may have committed murder, he is trying to escape justice, so he will be died. The justice is not permitting him to live, so they called him a murderer. They don't know anything about Paul. They saw a serpent has just coiled his hand. Then they found that after two days, even two days, nothing has happened. Then they started to say, the same, same people calling Paul a murderer, within two days they are saying, he is a God. Is it right? Both are wrong. He is not a murderer, he is not God. This is what people say. If you are going to listen to what people say, their lies, their comments, you will be eternally wounded. They don't know what you are, who you are, why God created you. It's only God. So many are wounded because of the comments of the people. It can be by your husband, your own dad, your mom, your siblings, your co-workers, your co-singers, your co-indecessors. People may make so many comments. If you are looking at it, you will only believe in lies and in these lies you will be oppressed. I know there are so many people, they are paralyzed spiritually and emotionally because of the comments made by people. And these are the comments they do. The same people who called Paul murderer, the next moment they are calling God. Even you yourself have experiences, people who may have called you a thief. You have never stolen anything. But that word is still hurting you. But what does God is telling? Surrender all those comments made by people at the feet of the Lord. That's why in the scripture we read this is Isaiah chapter 51 verse 7. You can repeat this healing word of God the Lord is telling you. Everybody together, do not fear, do not fear. the reproach of others. Do not be dismayed when they revile you. The Lord is telling, you should not look at what people say. What people say. Isaiah 2.22 Turn away from mortals who have only breath in their nostrils. For of what account are they? The human comments the comments of negative comments, if it has been really put you into trouble, remember, you have to look at what God says. Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, a plan for your welfare, not for destruction. Saint John Maria Viani, a powerful priest, but for his fellow priests, he was a stupid person. They openly called him stupid. But we know God called him a saint. A saint. So anyone who
who is here listening to this word of god god has a plan for you god has a plan god has a plan when pope francis was giving a retreat for the priest on the year of mercy i was also attending that retreat he said one of the most powerful uh, photos the the drawings he liked is the call of matthew the tax collector there's a beautiful drawing in vatican so he was explaining about that picture where in that picture jesus is entering into the room where matthew was collecting tax so jesus is entering and matthew is pointing to himself matthew is asking jesus is it to me you are calling because he is collecting tax there are many people so but jesus is looking at matthew and matthew is questioning himself so pope francis was interpreting like this when jesus entered into the room where matthew was collecting tax matthew could not believe that jesus can call him so matthew is telling jesus do you know who i am i am a tax collector i am an outcast i am a sinner people hate me nobody gives me any value if you call me even those who are with you they will desert you because people they don't want to associate with me you are mistaken maybe it is not you whom you wanted whom you wanted jesus said matthew i know who you are come follow me my dear sisters and brothers for the people he is a tax collector he is a sinner he is an outcast he should not be associated with but for jesus he is a disciple an apostle an evangelist a saint today as you listen to me maybe you are in that cage in that prison of what people has made you with the comments of people telling you are a widow you are an orphan you are poor you are good for nothing you are not educated but is it what the lord wanted to tell you in spite of every command he comes to you and he is telling come follow me i know who you are you are an outcast for people but not for me today as we are attending this bible convention in this inner healing retreat listen to what god wanted to tell you what he wanted to tell you he never abandons anyone and he loves you the way you are i was doing my studies on spirituality one course is called spiritual counseling so in this course my professor he is called father luke buckles he is from california from united states one exercise he made us to do to write our personality traits so he gives us a, an eight sheets paper with so many characteristics that we have so he he has put there are you an extrovert so if you are an extrovert you have to put the point the mark how much extrovert you are are you an, an introvert person are you a melancholic person are you a joyous person different type of personality traits so after filling these eight sheets column of your personality that means you get angry very fast you don't smile much you smile so much you relate with others there are so many traits that personality has after filling these eight sheets of paper he will ask us to calculate the points you have scored so after this score he will give us another sheet of paper explaining so your personality is melancholic your personality is extrovert that means you are outgoing social person then according to the point you may be an introvert person that means you don't go out you are an inward person so after filling this you will understand what is your personality then father luke gave us a new set of paper with the name of saints having the same personality type you have you are an introvert don't worry saint he is explaining that saint therese of lisieux was an introvert so you don't want to become an extrovert to become a saint 
You are an extrovert, Saint Mother Teresa was an extrovert. You are a melancholic person, Saint Catherine of Siena was like that. And he is explaining, the Lord wants you to train people to attain their holiness the way they are. They don't want to change their personality to become a saint. He comes to you the way you are. God created you in this particular nature, in this particular characteristic, in this particular personality. You don't want to copy anybody. Be who you are. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even there are many, even the parents, even your mom, she does not know who you are, what you are, what's your purpose. Even your mother, she does not know the purpose of your life. Let us read, this is 2 Maccabees chapter 7 verse 22. The word of God is telling the mother of these Maccabees, she is telling her sons, my children, it is not me who gave you life. And I do not know when you came into being in my womb. I do not know how you came into being in my womb. It's God who gave you breath. It's God who gave you life. Today, if you ask your dad, if you ask your mom, why I am born? Why did you create me? Unfortunately, they don't know who you are. Why you are born. So today itself, stop blaming your dad and your mom. Many are in the prison of blaming and accusing others. There are many who say, I am like this, I am not educated, I could not do well because my mom did not love me, my dad did not care for me, that is why I am suffering. You have to stop saying that because your dad is your God, your life giver is not your mom, is God himself, he alone knows why you are born. Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you. A plan for your welfare. St. Martin de Porras. He was disowned by his dad. Actually, he was brought up without a dad. His mother was like a slave. So the father rejected him. But God owned his life. And he became a saint. Being the son of a prostitute, Martin de Porras became a profound saint. Sisters and brothers, for God, he can make anything out of your life. Gideon was disowned by his own tribe, but God chose him. Today, as you are listening to me, let no one make you a captive of human oppression and comments. Human oppression and comments. And let us stop blaming any human person for who you are and what you are suffering today. Because if a snake bite you, who is to be treated? The snake or you? Let us stop accusing anyone. Let's stop treating the snakes. You are the victims. And you need to surrender your life to God and he is going to do something very, very special in your life. Praise the Lord. Some who are going through severe spondylitis, as you are listening to the word, he is healing you. Somebody having severe arthritis, even inflammation, swelling on the feet, God is healing you. Somebody having some kind of growth in the body, he is healing you. Somebody having a heart related problem, you are even using a pacemaker, you have already done a, a surgery, God is healing you, giving recovery for your heart problem. Somebody has done a kind of a chemotherapy because of your cancer and you are suffering the after effects of this treatment. God is giving you complete healing of the treatment you are going through. We are talking about inner healing. Let us surrender every comment people made at the feet of the Lord. Nobody knows who you are except your God. So no human comment may oppress you. There are people who say, Father, I think I am cursed. But remember, Galatians 3.13, all the curses 
have come upon Christ who became a curse for us so no human word no human command can oppress us once we surrender and submit our life at the feet of the lord because we are what god created us i am his child i am his creation i'm not a slave i am not a fatherless child i belong to my father god the father one day one boy the mother brought to me this boy this boy was abusing drugs and taking alcohol so the mother wanted that we pray for this boy so the boy was brought he was almost 17 17 18 years so when we started to pray for him i just asked him but after all why do you take drugs don't you know that when you take drugs you are destroying yourself don't you know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit why do you destroy yourself then immediately he told me but father nobody loves me i don't know who is my dad he does not care for me i don't have a purpose in my life father can you tell me why i am born my father does not want me my mother accuses me of everything he she because she hates my dad she hates me father even if i get take drugs because there is no one i don't have a purpose in my life i told him isaiah 63:16 you cannot say you have no father isaiah 63:16 let us repeat this word of god for you are our father though abraham does not know us and israel does not acknowledge us you o lord are our father our redeemer from of old is your name for you are our father we told this boy god is your father even if your biological father does not acknowledge you even if he has forgotten you you have a father god is your father again we explain to him to repeat psalm 89 and 26 psalm 89 and 26 raise your right hands and repeat after me he shall cry to you you are my father my god on the rock of my salvation he shall cry to me you are my father my god on the rock of my salvation heavenly father today i declare you are my dad you are my father you are my maker you are my creator you are my potter i submit my life to you i declare i am your child i am born of you my life comes from you and i declare you are my dad you are my father and i will show your character your mercy your compassion your love even to my myology biological father my father in heaven give me your love give me your nature hallelujah my dear sisters and brothers if anybody is thinking my father my biological father did not love me did not care for me that is why i am like this that is why i take drugs that's why i am irresponsible you are mistaken on the day you are baptized you became an adopted child of the heavenly father you became the child of jesus you became the child of the holy spirit and you need to show and express the character of holy trinity one god because he is there to heal you to protect you that's why the scripture says <coughs> Psalm 27:10 Even if your father or mother forsake you I will not forsake you 
I will not forsake you. As long as your God never forsakes you, you have all the reason to submit your life to the Father God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even there are people who say, I am like this because my mother did not love me. Because my mother did not care for me. But you have to know, your God is your mom. There are people, since immediately they are born, they have been brought up by their grandmother, they have been brought up by their uncle or aunt, and they feel that emptiness, that sorrow, that void. But God is your mother. That is why we read in Isaiah chapter 49, verses from 15. Can a mother forget her nursing child? Even if she forgets, I will not forget you. Isaiah, Isaiah 66, 12, 1, 13. Continue to repeat, raise your hands. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream and you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees as a mother comforts her child so I will comfort you you shall be comforted in Jerusalem keep down your hands we had a retreat in Vienna in Austria when the retreat was, it was like a Bible convention. When the convention was going on, there was intercession going on in the nearby intercessory chapel. So I found a particular lady came in the morning with a bottle of water, taking fasting and praying. I did not know her previously. I was told she is an intercessor. So during the break time, I went there and I could find she is passionately praying for the salvation of the souls attending that Bible convention. So I just asked her, can you share with me your God experience? Why do you love Jesus so much? And how do you get this passionate uh, gift of intercession? Then she told me, she is now more than 50 years old. She is a married woman. She has a family. And now when the convention is there, she has taken off to intercede. Then she told me, Father, I started to love my God when I was 13 years. And she told me, Father, I am born in a family of four girls. And I am the fourth girl. My mother used to call the firstborn my pearl with great love. Her name is not Pearl, but with great love, my mother used to call my eldest sister. But I have never heard my mom calling me my pearl. I thought at least once she may call me. But later I understood, I was thinking, maybe I'm a girl. She was expecting a boy. Now I am a, the fourth girl. Now maybe that's why she does not like me. So I'm not her pearl. But I thought as a little girl, I also feel to be loved, to be appreciated, to be acknowledged by my mom. But she never called me. But she used to take me to the church. And I used to go to the church and pray. One day I was attending the Sunday Mass. The priest was celebrating the Mass. And there was so many people in the church. And during the time of the Mass, I found Jesus. The priest disappeared and I found Jesus standing in the place of the priest. And Jesus is looking into, into me and he is calling me. My pearl. My pearl. My pearl. My pearl. And she said, I was 13 years. Jesus entered inside me, inside my body, inside my soul, inside my mind. I became a new person. That is the day I came to know I am a pearl of my Jesus. I am born for him. I am his beloved. I am the fourth born girl of my Jesus, not of my mom. I never told anyone, I even, even, I have never told even my mom 
to call me my pearl Jesus knew my heart my mind and he knew that i need that love that assurance that i am not unwanted i'm not rejected god loves me the way i am the way i am a girl the way i am the fourth born he called me i am his pearl and she told me father not only that he gave me answers for all my questions i always had a question why did my mom did not love me so much why she was irritated with me why she hated me though she is a good woman she never told me openly but i felt as a daughter and she told me while she was praying the lord revealed to her why her mother did not love her the way she expected the lord told her to read john 15 18 and 19 if the world hates you be aware that it hated me before it hated you if you belong to the world the world would love you as its own because you do not belong to the world but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hates you in the biblical language world means people god loved the world so much john 3:16 that he gave his only son world means the people your dad your mom your brother your sister the lord interpreted to her if the world means your mother if your mother hates you be aware that she hated me before she hated you if you belong to your mother your mother would love you as her own because you do not belong to your mother but i have chosen you out of your mother therefore the mother hates you she was telling me as an intercessor father if my mother loved me so much if my mother called me her pearl i would never become an intercessor i would not taste the love of my god today i love my mom with a greater love a love that comes from god because i came to know is god alone i am called to love the first commandment how to love my god with all my heart with that incident i came to know i am the pearl only of my god today as you listen to me are you wounded are you pained because your mom you are never a favorite of your mom remember you are a favorite of your god that's why god has blocked your mom to love you god has blocked your dad to be a father to you because god is your father god is your mother and your god has a name he is the god of the orphans he is the god of widows he is the god of the abandoned the orphans John 14:18 I am coming to you I will not leave you orphaned He is so close to you you can only experience and taste his love when you are being rejected by human people maybe your dad and your mom god has not told them to love you you are not a pearl of your dad or your mom and you don't want to become like that you have to be a favorite of your god because he alone has a specific purpose about your life praise the lord so every wound that you carry in your heart saying i am rejected i am unwanted till the till, since the day i am born i don't know why i am born i don't know the purpose my dad did not care for me my mom did not care for me stop that your dad is your god your mom is your god he cares for you 1 peter 5 6 1 peter 5 6 humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god and he will lift you in due time 1 peter 5 7 because he cares for you he cares for you do you want your mom to care for you or do you want your god to care for you your god is the alpha the omega the immanuel the one who is with you the one who is inside you repeat after me my jesus i believe is because you loved me as you were on my own family does not care for me jesus i thank you so much for blocking human love to experience your love 
your presence your purpose in my life hallelujah 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 keep down your hands since the day you are born until today since the day that you are in the womb of your mom until today in one way or the other way we are all wounded and we need healing if you have inner wounds and if you are not healed we will wound others we will hurt others even if you are a husband if you are not be if you are a wounded person you will hurt your wife if you are a wife if you are a wounded person you will hurt your husband we need inner healing many of our behaviors are rooted in inner wounds there are people who get angry there are people who can never accept any authority these are all rooted in inner wounds in our our behaviors most of our behaviors if you ask one day one lady came to me she told me father my problem is i'm getting angry so much for small things and i lose job because of this my husband is upset with me but father i cannot control this anger then we asked her who was getting angry at your home your dad or your mom then she said father my mom is a quiet person but my father we were all afraid of him the moment he speaks he gets angry so we told her now that same character is following you because she hated her dad because he was always angry through that spirit of hatred that same wound of anger came to her we told her did you forgive your dad she said my dad is no more he is dead we told her then you have to pray for the salvation of your dad you need to pray for all those who have been hurt and wounded through the anger of your dad though he is departed as a daughter you have a duty to pray for the healing and the salvation of the soul of your late dad and you will be set free because the lord does not want even a soul to be lost ezekiel 33:11 ezekiel 33:11 say to them as i live i do not rejoice in the death of a wicked person but i wanted them to repent and return to me why do you die o house of israel that means even a departed soul is in the hand of god even if somebody is dead or alive he does not want anyone be lost so when you pray for those who have inflicted the same character the same wound the same traditional or hereditary habit when you pray for the root you are going to be set free because this character is not just remaining with you praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord so when you as a dad or mom when you get out of a particular sin a particular habit your generation is going to be blessed your generation is going to be set free so any kind of character that you find it's with you there's a root root cause in it i met a particular candidate she was always having stomach related problem the the formators take her for treatment sometime it's okay again it comes back then during the inner healing retreat the holy spirit revealed that she was been sexually abused by her step brother who was from the first wife step brother she was abused when she was young later on she joined the convent to become a nun because of fear she never told this to anyone but she kept hatred towards this step brother she did not forgive herself she kept that self pity and self hatred she hated her step brother thus she hated herself she did not forgive her brother she did not forgive herself so it affected her physically that is why even psychologists say what our mind hides the body will bring it out 
so if we hide any kind of wounds wounds of rejection wounds of abuse these are called psychosomatic diseases psycho means mind soma means body that means our mind and body are interrelated if our mind does not forgive our body becomes sick that is why i have heard people saying father i am sick i go to hospital i take medicine still i am sick if you have a sickness and medicine cannot heal you your sickness is not just physical but it is spiritual it is emotional if anybody is saying you are sick and doctors cannot help you medicine cannot help you or the help the medicine gives is temporary after short time that same sickness is recurring again coming to you that means there is something more than physical there is something emotional there is something spiritual there is something that is related to your mind your mind is wounded and there is no science there is no technology there is no doctor who can heal your mind it's only jesus who is the same yesterday today and forever he is the alpha and the omega he is the only one who knows your past your past is present before jesus look at one of his name he is one of his name is called the great i am the great i am he, he is the god of the present he knows how to do something new on this present time for the biju was quoting isaiah 43 18 and 19 scripture says do not remember the former things or consider the things of old i am about to do a new thing now it springs forth i will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert our god is the god of impossible things our god is the god of miracles he will make a way in the wilderness wilderness is a place where there is no way desert is a place where there is no water and god is going to create rivers in the desert provided you forget the things of old you submit that abusive experience in your life you surrender that witchcraft experience at the feet of the lord you submit that particular sin you involved in the sect the satanic cult you have joined just submit at the feet of the lord he is going to do something new in your life he can do something new because he said john 6 from 55 he said if you eat of my body if you drink of my blood you will have new life praise the lord your body becomes new the sin the the body that you committed the sins you committed in your mortal flesh when you receive jesus in the eucharist your body becomes new you are no longer the new old person 2 corinthians 5 from 16 we read those who are in christ jesus they are a new creation the old is passed away that means the only god who promised to give you a new body is christ a new body is christ a new blood is christ and when you submit your life to christ he will wipe those oppressive feelings of the past those oppressive sins of the past praise the lord praise the lord that's why jesus said nicodemus unless you are been born again you cannot become you cannot enter the kingdom of god to be born again means to submit your old past sinful life sinful memories at the feet of the lord and he will make you a new creation and that's why he brought you here he can do something new do you believe that revelation 21 from 3 we read he is telling he will wipe every tear from your eyes please repeat after me this word of god see the home of god is among mortals he will dwell with them as their god you can repeat loud they will be his people and god himself will be with them he will wipe every tear from their eyes death will be no more 
mourning and crying and pain will be no more for the first things have passed away see i am making all things new i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to the thirsty i will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life praise the lord